I'm a little mad at myself. I lost my other lavalier mic. This is actually the one that I normally use. It's the big fuzzy one if you ever see it, if I ever go on camera, but I won't. So, but last video I made, I did it inside and I used a different one and it has since disappeared and I moved some things around and did some things and it should be in one or two spots and it's not. And I'm also missing some heavy duty wire cutter pliers, um, which is weird because I just bought another pair as a backup and I lost my good pair so I have to find that gremlins in the house I think spirits actually I think there are spirits that live in our house I think we share our space with something that's not exactly of this plane but that's neither here nor there and I apparently we're on okay terms so I don't do anything to make them upset um, and I don't really try to talk to them or anything um, and they leave us alone until we go to bed and then they go have a party in the house. It's weird. Anyway, that has nothing to do with anything. Wanted to show you a couple of things here. By the way, I'm just going to do a quick pass around here. Um, this guy got this last week. This garbage bag is not garbage. I haven't really gone through these yet either. I'm kind of waiting. But that came from, this came from one place, this came from another place. I picked up this pile today. There's that mystery box. Now we've only gone down two layers and I swear to God, I haven't gone any deeper than that. So that's still waiting to be whatever. And I'm just pedaling along with other things. And then I've got this pile over here too that I still haven't gone through that I picked up uh, over the weekend while I was out and about. So that said, we're gonna, Try to talk about some interesting finds that I find in these hauls that I get and maybe have a little reminisce sometimes about what are we going to call it? I'm, oh, I'm listening to a podcast right now called The Long 70s where they basically are uh, their premises that the 70s was a, it really was 1968 to 1983 or 84 is really the 70s. And I thought that was kind of a cool premise. And I've always thought about long centuries and short centuries and I never thought about it as a decade but uh, that kind of overlaps the cassette era which is kind of what I'm going to call maybe say 1975 to 1999 something like that and of course that's completely arbitrary by my part and if you listen to all the good histories that are out there and I don't need to repeat them just just go listen to the guys that, that actually did them, Technology Connections and Techmoan and all those guys, and they'll tell you all the right proper history. But you know, cassettes were back, oh, uh, shout out to the cassette, come back Tony too, I've been watching him open up blanks and it's like, hey, good job, man. Uh, now I know what to smell for when I open them up. Uh, anyway, thanks. Uh, but back to what I was saying was that, uh, you know, cassettes, started in the in the late 60s kind of but like they didn't really pick up steam until the players got better and then started getting uh some portability and portability of course was the walkman in 79 but i'm thinking cars the cars started getting tape decks in the mid to late 70s and that's when the stereos got a little bit better and dolby b came on dolby came on so it didn't say it sounded crappy and the tape formulations got better and everything everything got better into the mid 70s and then so from 1975 right straight through and of course things are still going on but that little 25 year period that basically corresponds to the first quarter of my life give or take a few years is the cassette era anyway i was just thinking about that it's the cassette it's not a what's a quarter of a century called a quick I don't know. Anyway, uh, what is that? What's a hat? What's a, a like a bicentennial is two hundred, or I guess it could be half a hundred. But what is a quarter? A quad quarter? Not a quad quadricentennial would be four hundred. I'm off on a tangent. We want to look at the tapes and talk about the tapes. Okay. So anyway, I want to show you a couple of things here that when you start picking up lots and lots of collections and going through them you start getting duplicates and you start seeing things, things that pop out and everything and so you get into some cool well you start picking up patterns now, this one is like oh i got this stardust moves and then i got this home and i was like hmm i think i have another one of these and i guess what i did 
Stardust Moods, the romantic song. So I have two copies of this now. But it's a Reader's Digest thing. And it just so happens, like, then I started seeing other ones. So now I have these things. This is the favorites from Johann Strauss, tape one and tape two. And so this Reader's Digest series is interesting. And it brings apart a reminisce of, of kind of what's going on with, with, you know, in that time frame is like people were compiling good music and like this happens to be one guy, but it's all, you know, his classics and there's a bunch of things on here. Tape two, side B, tape one, you know, he's, um, they're not the best made tapes and some of them have held up pretty well and some of them hadn't. Uh, listening wise, I've listened to some other ones too that I have. This is what I'm talking about, the ubiquity of it. This pile I got over here, guess what? There's two more of them in it. This is Moon Glow Tape 3, so I guess I'm looking for tapes 1 and 2 also. And then this one's called The Sons of Pioneers. Um, this one looks like it's um, like some old, old timey Civil War music, kind of bluegrass, 1800s bluegrass, and then this looks like well, romantic piano and orchestra. <laughs> Take a look at these rugged, rugged fellas here. I don't know. I haven't listened to these yet, so we'll, we'll find out what's going on. So, as I'm digging through, I'm finding a lot of these Reader's Digest ones. And it, it, it says that you know, people trusted Reader's Digest. They were a good aggregator. And, and it's very interesting because we had a lot less to pick from, even though I'm finding that there's so much music just go, just floating everywhere from that time period but especially since they, they they moved up the record catalog the original catalog on the cassette especially a lot in the 70s and 80s and then everything was on cassette for a good 20 years and then it faded out into the cds but they were still producing cassettes well into the 90s uh so the thing is is that even though there was le actually less music now because everybody's got music and it's just everywhere because the cost of producing it is, is nothing, but everybody still trusts a good aggregator. Everybody still trusts a good curator. And now when people are curated, they make Spotify playlists and stuff. And it's, mm, yeah, I get it. And that's, or YouTube playlists or, or whatever. And that's kind of what we're talking about. Or they, they'll, they'll, there's other ways to do it. But, um, it, you know, you've got some mass appeal like Reader's Digest putting out mass appeal music and it hey lo and behold it really had mass appeal because i'm finding everybody had copies of this you i guarantee if you now that you are paying attention to it you'll see that readers digest everywhere when you're looking through bulk tapes so i thought that was interesting that was one thing that i thought was interesting now the other thing i thought was interesting is when you get doubles now this is a very awesome thing by the way it broke this case as i was so I broke this case as I was preparing to do this video. I will replace it, but I wanted to show that these are originals here because it says, if, can you see this? Oh, let's go zoom properly. I don't know if you can see it. It says MCA Distribution Corp. And this one also says that because uh, these are. Oh, yes, it's Elton John's Greatest Hits, Volume 2. They're both the same. Now, this one's got a sticker over the barcode, but they're both the exact same printing. But obviously, there's something different because this has got that different barcode. But if you open this up, and now after I've shown you this, I will replace this, but I didn't have another MCA one. Uh, so what I found is there's a bunch of different, uh, obviously, and there's going to be a bigger nerd than I am that's going to tell you all about what this is and I haven't seen it yet and I'll point them out to you but of the different styles and what they mean and who what companies made them but there's a whole bunch of them that have the, the clear on the outside with the black and this little circle here and there's a different mark in each one so I or MCA or I've seen RCA or there's uh, I don't know you just take a look now this one doesn't have circles so we'll look at these later and this one that one's got a Warner label so we'll look at that in a minute Anyway, what I wanted to show, though, these tapes are identical as far as I can tell, and I believe this is the newer one. But if you look, this is the newer one on, on my here. If you look at those, if you look at those tapes, those are not the same tapes. So I think the first one here is a higher quality tape in the first printing and then the second printing because this was a mass mass hit obviously I have two copies of it right now and um, 
I'll probably find more. Hey, guess what? So which tape, which run you got matters. Here's another one. James Taylor's Greatest Hits. We will play this for the astronauts later. But notice, this is two different pressings. Well, not pressings, but printings. Both Warner Brothers is both the same number, M5 3113, but this is all white. And this has got the record style thing with this, and this is, this appeared, I, you've seen this a lot with record releases from the Warner Brothers label with the record, the small record with the black label and the thing like that. You've seen a lot of things like that. This is the secondary, this is a second, Time. I believe, and I have not yet sourced this out because I'm lazy, but, and I just haven't bothered to think about it when I was sitting on a computer, but I believe these white stripes mean that this is uh, part of a Columbia house or, or one of those type deals. Anyway, this is a different, and it's got just the white background. And then if you look, I believe, I mean, it's completely different. It's completely different. I mean, it's got all the same printings and stuff, and they're both, um, Warner Brothers tapes. Um, oh yeah, absolutely, I was right. Because uh, this tape right here says, not on this side, but on this side, manufactured by Columbia House under license made in USA. So this is a Columbia House tape and this is the actual Warner Brothers tape. And well, it's not a market different from the other one. This is the uh, Columbia House, the cheaper one. But it looks like those stupid Columbia House places. I mean, I never thought about it when I was a kid. But it really says something. These things, th those things cost money. And if you put your money into a better quality tape to get a better sound, uh, would that translate into being able to pay more money or get more money or sell more records or whatever, or do you cheap it out? And I want, and there you go, Columbia House was all those things for a penny. There you go. So it's a very interesting thing to think about and thinking about as we go forward. And I guess it doesn't matter as much as digital anymore, but I never thought about it with this. And I guess as, as CDs came along, it, it didn't matter as much, but as CDs, I guess, don't age very well. So another shout out to cassettes. Anyway, last one I want to show you is Jim Reeves. If you picked up anything from an estate sale or anything, you're going to come across this uh, country or mainstream or southern whatever uh, guy, Jim Reeves. He was awesome, kind of, for the time. And here is the countryside of Jim Reeves. And here's also the countryside of Jim, Jim Reeves. Now... These are both, this was previously recent Carmen Records, product of uh, Patrick and Woodbury, New York. These are all in the United States, by the way, which is crazy to think now. But everything is, this is an actual RCA tape here. I haven't looked at these yet, so this is why I'm kind of, this one is also an, by arrangement with RCA Records, this is a Camden cassette. So this was like a second or third printing. They, they, you know, these old rate, these old albums from these guys they're from the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. They just really recycled them through, and they did it on a record too. They re-released them and re-released them and re-released them, and then different people would get them, and then they would license it out. And some other guy apparently, you know, let's take a look at these quality of these tapes. Now, these tapes are pretty old too. I'm trying to look. This one, this is 1985, and this one is doesn't say. This one says it's in Dolby. This one just says stereo. And actually, Mr. Knockoff looks kind of dark. I can't smell anything out here. It's too cold. Oh, look, well, Mr. R Mr. RCA Camden. Oh, they're both Camden cassette. Hmm. Two printings, maybe? I don't know. The 85 one, lighter tape. Yeah, I can't smell anything. Whew. You know, you got to be careful when you do that, by the way. Well, you got to know where your tapes came from. Smokers, please, outside with that stuff, please. You're ruining everything. You don't even know. Just take the 10% of you that still smoke, just take it outside. 
Anyway, those are some interesting things that I found that I thought I might share. And I've got a lot of tapes to go through and I've got some other interesting things that I want to show you that I found. So, but we'll save that for another time. In the meantime, uh, I guess this is where I would say, tell me about your duplicates, second pressings, alternate takes, international releases, uh, anything quirky that you have in your tape collection that has to do with multiple tapes. What, how many copies of whatever do you have? Now, ready for this. Oh, by the way, shout out to Cassette Culture on Reddit and I sent out a J card of Rocky Horror Picture Show for a guy that was putting together a tape and because he wanted it for tape that he had recorded and then some other guys like, well I have the, I actually have the pre-recorded cassette so I'll send you that so he got some we put it together and it was kind of cool and since then I have picked up two copies of Rocky Horror Picture Show so I see I got double Elton John's I'm, you know if I sell these I start selling these if I ever do then then you know whatever but how many how many copies of whatever do you uh, do you have of anything of the same album whether it's the same copy or whether it's different artwork or like James Taylor or just part of the big old compilation curation that's the question and we'll keep answering it anyway that's all I have for tonight about stupid tapes I'm gonna go inside and listen to them Good night. Good luck.